Thank you for joining me for this, uh, this Ignite session on Microsoft Teams Room, Windows and Android. What's the difference? My name's Adam Jacobs. I'm a, a principal Microsoft architect at Poly. And today we're going to go over a, a number of areas. We're going to start off with a, an introduction to go through the differences uh, and, and the, the category uh, and how it's come to fruition over time. Uh, I'm going to go over some of the features and we'll perform some analysis across those. Uh, we'll look at the experience and how that's evolved over time. And finally, we'll finish off with uh, any deployment considerations on Windows versus Android. So first, an introduction. Um, the collaboration bar was the original category name for uh, MTR on Android. Uh, and it was announced back in, in early 2020 um, and launch partners at the time were Poly and Yealink. Um, and, the, and the focus area was really around a fully integrated device that had compute on board, audio and video, um, and it was super easy to deploy. Later on last year um, at, uh, at Ignite, that category was transitioned over to Microsoft Teams Room on Android. And uh, a number of reasons uh, drove that decision. One um, was that the existing collaboration bars caused some confusion. And as the feature parity of those devices became closer and closer over time, it kind of brought them both to that sort of Microsoft Teams Room type solution. Another thing that really opened things up was when Microsoft announced the, uh, the desire to then go to sort of more modular based rooms. So instead of everything being all integrated into one solution, there was a decision instead to, uh, to have a more traditional approach. And uh, initially the Poly G7500 was announced as one of the launch devices. So um, the existing category of MTR became MTR on Windows, and this new category or, or old category of collab bar became MTR on Android. So let's go through some of the key features. Uh, first of all, obviously they're running different platforms, hence the name Windows and Android. Um, they both support uh, dual display. Um, now, obviously, not all the um, uh, MTR and Android devices are, are uh, equal, and some of them will support dual screen and some of them won't. Um, the MTR on Windows today supports 1080p uh, transmit and receive, um, whereas MTR on Android is currently capped at 720p, although Microsoft does have a roadmap item to support uh, 1080p transmit also. Uh, direct guest join, which is a extremely popular feature on MTR for Windows, allows people to join into WebEx meetings, uh, Zoom meetings, and then other um, third-party ecosystems. Um, this is something that Microsoft have announced is now in development on Android also. Um, so that's great news because I know that that feature is extremely popular. Um, you can do Meet now on both systems now, and this is particularly useful when um, you don't have a meeting scheduled and you just want to create a quick ad hoc meeting from either of your MTR solutions. Um, and Whiteboard. Um, Whiteboard is available across both, um, although when the MTR on Android device is deployed in personal mode, and we'll go over what personal mode is later on, um, you can actually initiate the whiteboard from the device as opposed to being uh, initiated from uh, a meeting attendee. The content camera or, or magic whiteboard as it's known, um, this is not available uh, on the Android platform. It is available on Windows. Um, and today, uh, if you need a wired content ingest, uh, you need the Windows MTR to do that, um, although it is in development in Android as well. Uh, raise hand is available for uh, both personal and meeting modes. And um, personal mode is specific to MTR on Android. Um, 
and there's a number of reasons why that is uh, particularly useful and it's it's specific um, settings that could be exposed and not exposed depending on where the system is deployed. Uh, proximity join uh, and one touch join both available across both systems. Um, uh, some time back the touch console um, was something which was very different from an experience perspective also the home screen was different. Um, this is now um, very close feature parity across the two and I'm going to show you some screens so you can get a feel for what that looks like. Um, and the other thing to, to uh, understand here is that with MTR on Windows, um, effectively the touch console is delivered via an extended desktop. So the, the touch console is, is effectively the primary display for the Windows system. Um, and when the system um, boots up, it ensures that that stays as primary and that's where the console is uh, essentially presented. Um, with MTR on Android, it's actually um, uh, the uh, application running in a different mode. So it is running on a separate compute device, which is IP connected to um, the cloud and also to the, the front of room uh, system also. Um, some other features, so 3x3 layout is now available across both. Um, Plugin support, uh, and this is something that's typically leveraged by uh, people like Extron or Crestron for room control. This is something which exists today on Windows. Uh, it doesn't exist on Android. Um, background customization. So this is the ability to blur your background or change the background behind you. Uh, that is available in personal mode on MTR and Android, uh, but not on Windows. Uh, you can pin the video across both, although personal for uh, Android. Um, and a feature that Microsoft announced a little while back for meeting room capacity notifications, that is specific, for, uh, specific to Windows at this time. So let's have a little look at the experiences. Um, back um, or early this year, I should say, there was an update to MTR on Android. Um, and um, eff effectively, the whole user experience moved to an MTR style experience, hence the, the change from Collab Bar to MTR. Um, so we now have a much richer touch console experience. If a touch console is being deployed, um, the front of room display gives you uh, an updated calendar. Um, which shows you meetings um, for the, 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 the throughout the day. So you can see what's uh, ahead of you as opposed to just seeing what's, what's now. Um, and, uh, and the touch console experience, as you can see there, is, is very, very similar, albeit the only difference right now is the present option uh, isn't there yet because the content input support is still something on the roadmap. Now, if you are running the device in personal mode, you get a different experience. And you'll notice first and foremost that it's optimized for uh, a touch screen or a remote control. And you can now interface directly with that screen. So you'll see that the room controls are available there. You've got Meet Now, the dial pad and other options. And the uh, calendar is also clickable at this point. So you can click and, and join a meeting. So let's talk a little bit about the touch console pairing process. So in this illustration, you can see the touch console. Uh, in my case here, the touch console is signed in with the same account as the front of room. And because the account is the same and the poly pairing process has already been completed, it's going to present me with a blue box which says that my front of room device is a Poly Studio X30. It's showing me my serial number. And if I go ahead and click that blue box, it's going to present on the front of room device me with a, a, a code. And that code can be used to then pair the touch console. So I'm going to take the code. I'm going to go back to my touch console, put in the code and click pair. And that will then complete the pairing between the touch console and the front of room device. 
So now let's talk a bit, a bit about um, deployment of the Windows-based devices versus Android. Now, first up, um, any shared room device is going to go through the regular Microsoft Teams room deployment. Um, and uh, this is where you create a resource mailbox or a room mailbox. Um, you uh, enable an account, you assign a license to that account, um, and that allows you to have your room fully functional with a mailbox that you can send Teams invites to. Now, in the case of the uh, MTR and Android systems, we need to choose first of all whether we're going to deploy that system in a personal mode or in a meeting room mode. Now, the personal mode is particularly useful for people that are working perhaps from home or, or in an office environment and they want the system settings to be specifically optimized to personal use. So they need control to things like um, being able to access the call settings without putting in a password, signing out or signing in, um, starting the recordings, stopping recordings, starting a whiteboard, uh, and also maybe they want control of background settings, so things like background blur, etc. In meeting room mode, there are other features that get enabled and things that get restricted. So for example, access to call settings and Bluetooth, that would be uh, obscured behind uh, an admin password that your admin can set. Um, the user won't have the ability to sign the system out without the admin password. And um, an admin can also set a room system to automatically answer the calls. And to do that, you can set, see this uh, uh, Teams calling policy specifically for auto answer enabled type. And that can be set to enabled if you'd like to enable that um, and then present those options within the calling settings dialog. Once that setting's enabled, incoming call uh, invites uh, will then be auto accepted within a five second period. So, to create those policies, we have two policies here. We have one which is user sign-in, and we have another one which is meeting sign-in. So in this example, we're creating our policy, and this is a one-time thing. Uh, we're gonna call it um, uh, user sign-in. Um, and then if we wanted to go ahead and then assign that policy, we can do that by granting the policy, again, against a specific username and the policy name of user sign-in, which I created earlier. In a very similar way, if we wanted to create a meeting room policy, we can create our meeting room policy. Uh, we've called it meeting sign-in. And then again, I can, I can grant that policy to a specific username, which typically would be a, a room system account. So to finish off for, for today, uh, let's go through some of the key takeaways. So first of all, looking at the features. So features continue to become a lot closer to feature parity across both Android and Windows. Um, Android has been, has been catching up quite aggressively uh, over the last uh, six to nine months. Um, the other thing uh, here is that one size uh, fits all is not necessarily the case. You can mix and match these systems. You don't have to go all in on Android or all in on Windows. They can both play very well together in the same environment. Um, MTR on Android um, is now looking like it's gonna scale out to bigger rooms. So with the announcement of MTR on Android, we're seeing these more modular based rooms which have different types of cameras, mics, etc. So more options for larger rooms. The user experience, as we can see in the most recent update, the user experience is becoming very closely aligned to one another. So you could put um, an MTR in one room running on Windows, another room running on Android, and it's not going to confuse your end users. They're going to get a very similar experience across them, across them both. And the user experience is capable of adapting depending on whether there is a, a single screen or a dual screen setup um, and, uh, and also whether it's been deployed in a personal mode or in a meeting mode. So deployment, MTR on Android um, offers a personal mode that's very specific to Android, uh, not available on Windows. 
And that's because the, uh, the compact size of some of the devices and the fact that everything is integrated into one bar definitely lends itself to being deployed in, uh, in an office or a remote worker environment. Uh, MTR on Android uh, also has that um, standalone touch console, which can sometimes mean the deployment is slightly uh, easier. So for example, um, if I wanted to deploy a touch console uh, and have it IP connected to my network, I can run that to the floor, um, but I don't need to run it to the front of the room where potentially my PC is. So there are there is some, some uh, um, some flexibility around um, how you deploy AV. Uh, and that's gonna change even more over time as we see things like um, uh, IP-based microphones uh, and more sophisticated cameras. MTR on Windows does have a much richer experience when it comes to uh, the Teams Admin Center, um, specifically the, the device portal. So pretty much every single setting that you can set locally on a, a Windows MTR device, you can do via the TAC. Um, so much richer from a remote management experience. So hopefully this was helpful. Um, this was a very quick overview of the differences between uh, the two MTR system types. Um, by no means uh, is that not going to change. I expect things to continue to change over time. Um, so always check the Microsoft Office 365 roadmap for new features that are coming. Thank you very much for uh, joining this session. I hope you have a good rest of your day and enjoy the rest of Ignite.